Hiya gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Hurricanes come in all shapes and sizes. Some are lopsided and fleeting, brief pipsqueak storms that dissipate within a day or two of forming. Others are atmospheric buzzsaws, sweeping ashore a 20-foot storm surge inland and unleashing tornado-like winds that pulverize entire communities. Some places are left unrecognizable. Meteorologists use the Sacker Simpson scale to rate hurricanes based on their wind speeds. One is the tamest, five is the fiercest. It was invented in 1971 by Herbert Saffer, a civil engineer, and Robert Simpson, then director of the National Hurricane Center. It's been in use ever since, but many people wonder just how high the scale goes. And hypothetically speaking, of course, could there ever be a category six? There are multiple ways to answer that question. Officially, there's no such thing as a category six hurricane. No matter how strong the winds would be, it would just fall into the category five tier, which encompasses storms with winds over 157 miles per hour. There's no upper bound, so it would just be a category five. But let's look at the scale once more. Each category spans a 20 to 25 mile per hour range in wind speeds. Using that logic, we can say that if there were to be a category six, it would likely start at about 180 miles per hour. That's never happened in the South Atlantic, the South Pacific, the Indian, or the greater Australian region ocean basins. But plenty of storms in the North Pacific contain winds of that magnitude in their inner eye walls. It happens once a year or so in the strongest typhoons. In the Atlantic, there are only eight named storms on record that have ever had sustained winds estimated at or above 180 miles per hour. Irma, Rita, and Mitch had winds of 180 miles per hour. Dorian, Wilma, Gilbert, and the 1935 Florida Keys Labor Day hurricane had 185 mile per hour winds. And we can't forget about Alan back in 1980, the most powerful Atlantic hurricane on record. It had winds peak around 190 miles per hour between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula. Here's what the storm looked like in the Gulf of Mexico. Allen was a long-lived main development region storm that began over the open Atlantic between South America and Africa. Then it drifted west, eventually meandering through the Caribbean and then entering the Gulf of Mexico. It made its final landfall along the U.S.-Mexico border on August 11, 1980 as a Category 3 storm, bringing damage to Corpus Christi. But here's a question. What is the theoretical upper limit to how strong of a hurricane we could get? Well, Hurricane Patricia in the Pacific had a one minute sustained wind speed estimated at 215 miles per hour on October 23rd, 2015. It was also the fastest intensifying storm ever observed there, jumping about 90 miles per hour in strength in 24 hours time. But what about something that's not quite a hurricane? I'm talking a hypercane. Now, you've probably never heard of the term hypercane. It's theoretical, but Carrie Emanuel, an atmospheric scientist at MIT, ran simulations to show that when sea surface temperatures hit 122 degrees, basically you could get a hurricane on steroids, and he called it a hypercane. Now, hurricanes are low pressure systems. Ordinary hurricanes are missing about five to 10% of the atmosphere's ambient air pressure inside their centers. That's why they vacuum air inwards and you get the strong winds. Hypercanes, however, would be missing about 30% of the air in the middle, which means they could have wind speeds over 600 miles per hour. If you got a hypercane to form, it wouldn't be very large, only about 15 to 20 miles wide, but they could last for days on end. And they'd blast into the upper stratosphere or high in the second layer of the atmosphere. That zone is usually untouched by conventional hurricanes. Because of that, a hypercane could inject so much water vapor into the upper stratosphere that we could theoretically affect the global climate and the chemistry of the atmosphere. And some people even believe that may have played a role in the end of the dinosaurs or during the Great Permian Extinction about 245 million years ago, which is when like 96% of all the species on Earth went extinct. Of course, we can't heat the oceans to 120 degrees using just the sun. We need something fantastical, like a meteor impact. or the eruption of an undersea volcano. Now, all hypotheticals and categories aside, the talk of Category 6 hurricanes neglects one thing. As it is, we don't do a good job of rating hurricanes. The Saffir Simpson scale depends only on wind speed, but only 8% of hurricane and tropical storm fatalities come from wind. Roughly half stem from storm surge, which is dependent on storm size, speed, and longevity, and the shape of the seafloor. 
Another 27% of fatalities come from freshwater flooding. So putting it all together, maybe we shouldn't care so much about finding a Category 6 hurricane. Instead, maybe we should focus more energy on devising a scale that actually captures the true dangers of a hurricane. Let us know what you think in the comments, and of course, follow us on all social media platforms as well. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.